Instead of going for it here on fourth and goal, Crosby makes this a five-point game again. They kick the field goal, and now it's Brady. Keeps, throws, pass caught. Evans is fighting. He got nine. Brady floats it. Pass incomplete. And there are now a flag comes flying in. There was the jersey grab. Pass interference. Defense. Number 20. The ball we placed with this by the foul. First down, Tampa Bay. It came in really late, Joe. Toss to Godwin. He's got the first down, and this game's over. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady are going to Super Bowl 55. D, the Super Bowl is finally here. Young versus old. <laughs> LeBron versus Jordan in football. <laughs> light skin ver- light skin versus white. Black Lives Matter versus Monica. Who wins? <laughs> Even though Brady has never said he's Monica, but you know. No, I don't think I don't think there's nothing Monica about Brady. I think that was a one thing like his he's buddies. white privilege incarnate, but that's about it. I feel it. that that was his buddies. <laughs> That was his buddy. Hey, man, put the hat on. That was, that was, that was Gronk. That was Gronk's hat. <laughs> look, 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 Gronk's stupid. He don't know. I Gronk is the guy that wore... I hate Gronk. saying like that, but I think Gronk is like bone stupid in a way. CTE, dog. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on I was going to go as far as CTE. <laughs> I think it's just more of... Uh, like, come on, man. He'll do it like, like, like yeah, you like, like, here's Tom. You know, this is associated with Tom, Donald Trump. I'm no racist. I mean, come on, man. Ain't we all racist? <laughs> and Brady looks at him. Get the fuck on the field, Gronk. God damn it. Just, just, yeah, cool, dude. <laughs> Take a picture with the hat and just go on. You know what I'm saying? But um, before we get into football, I have to do this real quick because we barely touched on UFC, but I have to talk about this because I actually did watch the UFC pay per view this past weekend. And um, just to jump straight to it and stuff, uh, McGregor got. Fucking straight. I mean, rocked. Rocked by rocked. Dustin Poirier. And it was funny because Charlie called it, but he felt it was going to be kind of close and stuff. Just depends on what McGregor's going to do. But, like, mm-hmm. yo, I have never seen anybody's lids get lit up. And then I didn't know the after effects was that bad until I saw yeah, McGregor yeah, come out yeah. with the fucking cane. I was like, oh shit. Now, I know this because of wrestling. If you get, I know this because of wrestling because I'm never kidding. Very famous story. Ken Shanrock, um, when he was fighting Vader, he lit Vader's legs up so bad, Vader couldn't leave the locker. So the house show even, wasn't on the actual no, that was on network. pay-per-view. That was on Which pay-per-view? Oh, God, I don't know. I, I need to look it up. I need to watch this now. But you can find it. It's Vader versus <laughs> Ken Shanrock. And the whole time, Vader is telling that dude, stop shooting, stop shooting, stop shooting. Ken Shanrock is like a, a, like not even a full. So he green still. He, he's not, I mean, Super he's green. Funny. It's weird with Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock had a background in pro wrestling, but it was really weird. And I want to say it was the best thing in the world, but it was weird. He just put it this way: he couldn't. He kept stiffing him the whole time, and and it's like, yo, yo, chill, bro, chill. And by the end of it, he just lit Vader's leg up so bad, and that's why I know that. And I seen uh, who was it? Not BJ Penn. Um, it was somebody else in UFC. They had a they had fucking crutches. I'm like, yo, he break his leg? No, he can't leave. He can't stand up because his leg. Dude, Dustin lit that leg. He lit, dude. He lit McGregor's calf up. And like over the time, be like, all right, McGregor, because McGregor wasn't blocking it for like half the fight no, he until he until he started until all. you notice he started limping and then all of a sudden he started blocking it. I was like, yep, and he got Man, his we ass. We came out. We came out. What round was that? The third round. When he came out like he was like at a, at a weird tilt. I'm like, yep. he about to fall over. <sighs> He about to fall over. He just started hitting this nigga's chest and lit them two punches in the head. I'm like, that's it. That's, that's it. it. It's like, that's call it. it. Call it. Yo, and this is different. This is different for me because this is one of the first times 
Um, well, number one, number one, number one. Um, I've seen Conor McGregor. We've seen Conor yeah, we've seen last them. time. Yeah, but but this is the first time where, um, I didn't hear the overwhelming um, majority saying anything about you know like McGregor had this one. No, a lot of people was straight up question about. Can you still do it? Can you still do it? Is he is he still number one? Yeah. No, I think the time probably passed. But look, I'm not about to Steve Smith this shit. Like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Speaking of which, was Steve Smith right? Was Stephen A. Smith right about this? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I'm not even saying it. But was he right to judge him? Like, I don't know. Whatever. Damn. I mean, but you could tell. Like it felt like Connor was still doing more of a boxing kind of thing than actual like MMA kind of style and stuff. Cause he wasn't doing a lot of kicking. It was just straight up punching and stuff. Yeah, he was out of his, he, it looked like he was kind of out of his element a little bit, but then again, like I said, it, you know, like certain things about that fight, I let it go because like, well, I don't know enough about it. I don't know, you know, whether, you know, how, how long their training was shit like that. You know what I mean? And that, that should have been a red flag for me because usually when it comes to Conor McGregor, they, they record everything he does, everything he says. And then this whole build up to this fight, it was like it was quieter than usual. Yeah, it wasn't Just boisterous, quieter. but it was still kind of like, hey, McGregor's coming back kind of thing. It was still the, the, like the hype was there, but it wasn't like you said, it wasn't at its apex peak yeah, versus any other time and stuff. So, and I, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, COVID and all that bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll be louder. If anything, there would be more talking. <laughs> for Conor McGregor. Yeah, I mean, you know. Um, so, anyways, just to, before we get into NFL, NBA, um, Wizards are three and ten, and uh, I told you we were shit. And, and I told you it's we it's. Shit. Um, he's not a hundred percent. Who Russ? Russ is not a hundred percent. Russ clearly. is clearly not a hundred percent. Oh, uh, because apparently he's out for another quadricep thing that's going to have him out for another month. And you know what? Me so yeah, me personally, get, get well, get well, and get 100%. All, dog, don't rush yourself back, just get 100%. So you'll be and fine. This is the team. And like, this team has a lot of potential on it. And I think you let Bill rock because Bill more than likely was going to have to do that again this year. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to rock a certain amount of time by himself anyway. So, yeah. and Bill's fond enough to do it. I think there's a lot of things, there's a lot of question marks though. You have to um figure out in DC. Yeah, yeah, now it's really clear at this point. Just being honest with you, at this point, we gave Bertans too much money, and I told you we did when we gave it to him. But so, he's still he's healthy. I mean, he's healthy. It, oh it, yeah, it, of course he's healthy. But I'm just gonna be real. We we still paid him. Way, to him he's in this right? way. He still goes in double figures, but it's not to the level that it should be to be where he can be on par with Bill consistently. Like you need was, somebody to back it up and stuff. But so it's like he'll get 15 or something like that. But it should be more to kind of be on par with Bill getting like 40 or something like that. You know, I will say this the Wizards approved one thing you could score. Good for you. You can score. Play defense when you need to, but it's not the consistent. What does that mean? You can score. So me, what? Me, me, can score <laughs> meanwhile, guess who's not the laughing stock of the NBA for now, D? Who? The Knicks. Oh, yeah, for the, they, they the, put the word a while. A while, because the Knicks, let's be real, the Knicks were always the laughing stock of the NBA for the longest goddamn time, and they're actually playing pretty good fucking ball this year. I, 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 the, I'm, I I'm love, shocked. I love how Knicks fans view themselves. I love it. They have they, chips on their shoulders. They, they walk around like it's like, y'all didn't win nothing in the 90s. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> man, we got to be tough like the Patrick Ewing team and all the rest of it. Here's me. Y'all didn't win nothing back then. I mean, man, we had we had Pat Riley. We could... but y'all didn't win but shit. But y'all were getting taken out by the 76ers, the Pacers, and the Nets. Oh, let's not talk about how Michael Jordan. Just oh, the Bulls threw... talked the let's fuck out. Let's not talk him. about how Jordan just threw his dick in y'all mouth and just started brushing y'all teeth with it like yo let's not even go there technically uh reggie miller did too to a degree I just, oh you know. reggie did that all the time reggie <laughs> reggie took pride he took pride special, special guest appearance by Jalen rose during the later years of the pacers years because yeah, they took pride beating the shit out of the knicks and you know look 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 i get it they, do they deserve it d no no my team deserves it my team deserves it you know 
We had Michael Jordan come over here. We had Gilbert Arena shoot somebody in the foot. I'm sorry, he didn't shoot nobody, but it still blew up the team. You know, like I had to deal with John Wall coming over here, revive. Look, we we had all these. Uh oh, muted again. All right, there it is. I'm telling you, man, it's to stop me from talking because they know it's the truth. Uh, but uh, we had to deal with all this same. No, my team deserves all all the. Oh, what about our turn? Y'all keep getting superstar at the superstar to go. Up Remember Lynn Sanity, guys. Lynn Sanity. That's why I hate Nick fans. That's why I hate <laughs> Nick fans. Hey, 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 I ain't gonna lie. I was, Shit. I was part of. I was part of the Lynn Sanity thing a little bit, just on the aspect of just like, oh, I like to see Jeremy Lynn survive, and it's like, oh. Here's the thing: I knew Jeremy Lynn was just going to be. He was just a. He was okay. No, I hate saying it like this because it makes it sound like I hate him. No, it doesn't. He was just a above average Chinese nigga that can ball, and that's a rarity. Yes, it was. He. I mean, yes, he it was. Out me, but eh. that's what I'm saying. Did, did he need to be marketed? You know what? That's it. Yeah, if I was Lynn, yeah, I would have. If I was, if I was Jeremy Lynn, yeah, I would have ran with that. And he got to I play with Kobe for a hot second. He got to play with a bunch of people, man. He's currently back in the G League. He's a G League Shanghai. Right Wait, but he's no, he's in Shanghai right now. Yeah, 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 yeah Shanghai. And stuff. I mean, he's like I said, maybe he needs to go back to G League to kind of beef up his skills. I mean, it helps. You know, or then again, you know, I'm in, I'm in China now. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is what it is. It's you played in China, it ain't exactly going your way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Yeah, you know. Oh, what about St- what about Stephon Marbury? No, that nigga chose. He chose. That, that was purpose. That. that was purposed, okay? <laughs> he realized he done pissed off uh, at the NBA and nobody wanted to play with him. And he... <laughs> he took yeah, I mean, you know. It, so, it, it, so it's amazing. So you got that. Um. Wall and them are doing pretty good in Houston. It's clearly Wall's team in Houston. Now I want now I want to tell you this. Um, I want to tell you this. Um, at least on the line. No, period. Wizards fans are such. We are so defeated. Fan. They are so defeated. I hate. Talking it's one of those. We just we just want something good to go our way. You know for what? You know kind what? Of thing, I, you I know? think I know what we are, Chris. I think we know what we are. We are if we are. No, that's a. No, no, it's the same similarities. We're like that. Di- we're Detroit Lions fans in DC when it comes to the Wizards. <laughs> Bill it will wall is oh. Matthew Stafford. Oh my God. Oh, yes. we'll get to Stafford when we get to the NFL news because there's something huge coming out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that being, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good, yeah, it's a good comparison. We just keep, oh man. Detroit want do? Matt Stafford to be the guy to get them in. And funny enough, <laughs> look, 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 look. If 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 Dallas didn't quote unquote get the ref touch that year when they, we had to play Detroit in the playoffs and stuff because Detroit had us dead to rights in that, that game that probably would have been it. That Did, probably would have been it. Detroit game. probably would have. Detroit probably would have. Oh okay, but that game it was like yo Dallas you lucked out. I that know one that they would have got that monkey off their back and actually won a playoff game. That's at least that. At least now would they have beat, at least that. Now would they have beaten Green Bay? Fuck no. Who knows? No. Green Bay was gonna light them up like they lit us up. That was prime Aaron Dez Rodgers. Cal- so right. Dez, look, Dez caught it, but yeah, they would have lit us up. <laughs> look, look. The point is, the point is, like, yeah, I can't talk to us, Chris. I can't talk to my brothers. I can't talk to them. You know why? This is what I get from everybody. We should have never. Tra- <laughs> we should have never traded John Wall away. I told you he was broken. Russ was selfish in Houston. He was selfish there. I'm like that dude is like yo. He's clearly hurt. This is the worst trade in the world. This is why does Washington always trade away our best players? Nigga. Now I, I I will give Bill this though. Bill Bill I, Bill did push back on all those rumors that he wants out because there's been because again the meet you know yeah. sports media has this thing of like pushing out TMZ esque rumors of like Bill wants out of Washington because he's tired of Russ scoring so much and it's like what and then Bill was like no dude I actually want to build up this fucking team like I want this team to get built I up like- at it because he was like I'm playing with I'm playing with Russ like I got a pl- chance to play with a really c- incredible player in John Wall you give me Russell Westbrook a dude who's going to the Hall of Fame all right who came out here who came out here twice no, no, three times, busted his hell and still pulled out a triple double. 
I want to play with this dude. Yeah, Bill is just he like, yo, broke I want hell right now, but I want to play. With him. He was like, yo, I want this team to get built up and stuff. Hey, it is what it is. You know, I I'm not going to I'm not going to knock it. And then that whole thing with him and Wall having beef and it's like you see them dapping up during the Houston Washington game. I'm like, yeah, they don't have no beef. I'm they like, love the fuck it. people talking like, to each other. They love each other. Yeah. They love each other, man. The fact that during the whole I will say this. I can't tell. I'm probably super wrong about this. But last year, when well, the year before and this and last year, when John wasn't playing, you notice how Bradley was right beside this Bama, pulling him out in in, in front of the public all the time. You notice yeah. that? Yeah. I felt that I felt that Bill was the reason why John Wall didn't get crushed, not playing for the last two years. You know, this was because real talk, and, and you got in here the rumors that everybody's saying this is Bill's teams, that this is Bradley's team, that is Bill's team, this is Bill's team. That has to suck. Yeah. Because this team was made for John Wall. Still is. And that's why the, that's why I'm saying get rid of Brooks because dog, you trying to still do the same blueprint. You're dealing with an older Russ, man. You're dealing with all this and you're not coaching nobody. You're it's clearly not, uh, not coaching not the nobody. Thund- right this, this isn't Thunder Russ. <laughs> this wasn't the Thunder this ain't the Thunder Russ. And clearly what you're dealing with is guys that can't run that offense no more. If you don't find a different way of running this team. No, that's why I said. Oh, he's on the chopping block. Yeah, he's on the chopping block. Brooks is on the definite chopping block for me, man. I mean that. That's not even funny. The team, the team, the people where we got on the squad, there are some young people on here. I don't know if it's going to be here in Washington or elsewhere. They look like they're going to be journeymen. They're either going to be journeymen or they're going to actually sh- shock the fuck out of us and be something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think Brian, I still think Brian is going to be a beast. I just don't know how. I don't know what's going to happen. You might even fuck around and be like a Horace Grant type nigga, but you know, still, man. <laughs> Minus the goggles. <laughs> Minus the, I wish he had the goggles. Speaking of which, speaking of which, Chris, um, making it through, uh, uh, making it all uh, through the the last dance with my kids is fun. Um, I only skipped one part so far, and that was um dealing with um his dad's death. Real mm-hmm. talk is no, and this is just D. I don't like seeing Mike cry. Oh, you I know that, like, that that hurt. That, I, you know that hit him hard easily. I don't like seeing him cry. I don't like seeing him emotional because I, as much as I can laugh off what Mike, you remember at the end when he was talking like, if you don't want it as good as me, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. As much as I kind of like can crit- criticize that, I totally understand that shit. You didn't sacrifice like he did to do, to be as great as I did. And mm-hmm. on top of that, like, do I hate my teammates? No. I wanted them to share this. Like I did it for all of it. You know what I mean? And if you don't want, if you don't like the way I play ball, get out my way. And I got to be honest with you. That nigga's a winner. What you want him to tell you? So, yo, so I'm enjoying some of the stuff looking over it again. You know what I mean? Cause did I only did, seen, I only see a little bit of the first go round. You know what I mean? So looking did at you, it. Did you, just is love, did you just love, I kind of forgot that he did this, that whole thing with, for my Rashad he had them shades on talking about the fucking gambling and shit. He wore the sunglasses. <laughs> I fucking love that interview. Because <laughs> that was MJ fed up with like, what the fuck do you care about me gambling? Yeah, I gamble with them. What do you want? <laughs> for me, it's a, a fun little history lesson for my kids. Cause my kids like y'all, I like, I was like, y'all done seen some amazing stuff already at the NBA. You know what I mean? Y'all got to see Kobe, Clips of Kobe. Y'all got to see, you get to see LeBron right now. You get to see Giannis right now, who's a fucking monster. You get to see Curry mm-hmm. and all that. I like, I want you to see their heroes real quick. And that's pretty much what it is. You know, we've seen all the, all the, all the ball players that we were grown up watching. Like I'm on episode right nine right now. And they'll talk about Reggie Miller. And I paused it. I was like, "Y'all little niggas don't know nothing about Reggie Miller." See, people, like, people just it now right. because he's commentating is not as good as his sisters, <laughs> but it's like that dude was a fucking beast on the court. That dude was a threat. I got, I got to say this real quick about his sister, and I really mean this. I know she's the best of all time when it comes to women. I really do, and I'm not going to dispute that. I won't. Who did you play against? He was. She no, was there. Cheryl, Cheryl, who did you play against? Wasn't she there during the Cynthia Cooper ever era? No, she wasn't. She was retired by then, man. Yeah, Cheryl. Cheryl. So did, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl did Cynthia Cooper, then then um then uh Cheryl Swoops. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Well, no, no, Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper were in the same kind of like they kind of like they were the generation for her. They yeah, they, they, they. Cynthia, Cynthia had uh Cynthia was just the older 
the older ones out of the, all the young. But look, Cynthia was young when Cheryl was. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm trying to go there. I remember when Cynthia Cooper came into the, came into the league, and I was like, Cynthia Cooper looked like my aunt that She's just like plays. Everybody's ball. mama or aunt, nigga. I'm gonna say you know, aunt, aunt only because you know, of ponytail, she- small, look like she could deck a nigga dead in the chest. <laughs> Like, like she, like I'm not saying she don't look like a mom. But I just remember when she came to the league. I was like, ah, oh, she's cute, and she just looks like an aunt that she just like plays ball. Like, she, all right, she like her straight on. I loved um, but but yeah, it was like like I but I was telling him about um, who was it um, about Reggie Miller. I was like Reggie Miller. Yeah, he was Steph before Steph. <sighs> Man, and I was like, I was like, like, and my son was like, well, I thought his dad was good at three points. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Steph got it from somebody. Of course yeah, he did. Yeah. Really? But do you want to know who who was like him? Uh, you can argue better. Reggie Miller. Reggie couldn't score like well. If you let Reggie play in today's NBA, you oh, will murder murder three. Holy, holy shit! And my son was trying to. And my kids trying. My son's trying to figure it out. Like why? Damn, the score's all low. Like because shooting is different now. You can shoot people out of defenses. You can you can lullaby their ass to sleep. Thank Mike Shashevsky for doing for teaching all these bambas to come out of Duke to chuck three and make every, it very very stylish. Oh, every <laughs> single time Maryland played Duke, I feared for fucking um, Jay Williams. It was Jay Shane Williams, Bettier, Shane, Shane Bettier, Bettier, and Carlos Boozer. Them motherfuckers would shoot three. Carlos Boozer especially threw me off because he was a center that could actually shoot a three. If you gave him an open shot, I'm gonna give you two Bamas that I'm glad didn't become shit in the NBA that played for Duke that used to kill Maryland three pointers. One's gonna, one's gonna, you're gonna fall out your seat with one of them. The other one you're gonna say, so I remember that nigga. Fuck Chris Duhon. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, and I got the big one for you. And tr- and triple fuck Trajan Langdon. I hated both of them. I hated Trajan. That nigga Woo! didn't miss a freaking shot. And to learn that he played like one year in the NBA, like he played in Europe. And Where real Chris talk, he go? real talk, he was a good Euro player. So I can't knock him. Chris Duhon. <laughs> Do I play for the uh, Bulls for a little bit? Didn't he? There was a lot of people in that in that grad. Play for the Bulls. He might have. There was a lot of people in that graduated class that year, that along with uh, Juan Dixon and them, that like they had some success in the NBA and others didn't and stuff. Cause I think wasn't JJ Redick part of that, or was it after? JJ was after, but he was still a part of those guys that was like I said, changed the whole game up with just chucking threes. Like I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it, it's you know, and funny thing is, uh, we, we're talking about the, the Brooklyn Nets. Um, they're doing good so far. Yeah, they are. Kind of. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm with you. Where I'm like, let's see what you do in the playoffs. Oh, I'm standing by that. The reason why is, um, uh, the reason why is because I just don't trust nobody on that. I don't trust none of their their core. I don't trust none of them in the playoffs to be non selfish. But that being said, I think they. I still think they're going to go deep. I just don't see them win, beating like, and that's the and see. And I will, I will admit this to, I admit this to Charlie, and I admit this to other people. I don't know exactly who's going to beat them. Boston, might if, be Boston. If, if, if everything holds tight in the standings and stuff. It might cause... be Boston. It might be in the oh, but you know what does Boston give you or joy? Cleveland. You know what does give you joy though? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it. At least Miami's just as bad as the Wizards right now. Miami, Detroit, Charlotte, and, and Detroit, Washington. Ju- and Detroit just beat um LA yesterday. Good for them. That was Woo! a good win for them. Just a good yeah. win. Look, look, look. They, they, they're going to be trash, but a good win for them. Man. That's four teams in the Eastern Conference that are like just vying to try to claw their way out of the underscore of the Eastern Conference at this point. <laughs> okay, okay. So here you go. Trajan Langdon, um, he is currently the GM for the Pelicans. Oh, huh? good for him, man. Yeah, good for yeah him. he played for the Cavaliers from yeah, he was the Cavaliers. He played for the Cavaliers from 99 to two on 2002. And I'm guessing that's a what team? What team is that? That's a Croatian. A ta- he played for he played in Italy played for the uh he played in the g league bounced out of the g league played in that's turkey played in moscow and he played in russia from 2004 to 2011. yo so he, um mm-hmm. 
Chris Duhon played nine years in the NBA. Huh, yep. Now check this out. Hold on. Before you go to uh, Duhon, check this out though. I will give like this is why I'm gonna let Trajan Lehman go. He is the, he's a two time Euroleague champion. He's a he's a um he's an MVP um finals champion. He's a two time All Euroleague champ. He won he won the Italian Cup. He's run the Russian Cup six times. And of course you did. You know, of course you did. You don't. You you're a badass American that. Just to be honest with you, undersized if you go to the NBA. So that's why you stuck out there in the foreign league with a bum ass nigga from Duke fucking nigga. <laughs> real talk, real real talk, Mr. Langdon. I'm glad that you have a good career right now. And I, and I think you actually are doing a decent job with the Pelicans. Don't trade away. Don't you dare trade away ball. I he's trying to get rid of ball. Let you know. They're trying to trade ball right now and um, the Pelicans and I don't think you should keep that nigga. Keep him. Keep that. Keep that non-shooting Bama. <laughs> Chris Duhon. So he played four years. Okay. So Chris Duhon played four years with the Bulls. I was right. I knew it was the Bulls. Two years with the Knicks. Two years with the Magic, and a year yeah, with. Yeah, he Rangers. was on the Magic. Yep, and, and then year with the who? And year with, with who? year with the Lakers, and then he retired. What year the Lakers he played? What year he played? Twenty twelve to twenty thirteen. I remember that. I barely do. I barely. Well, do. that's when Dwight Howard was with them initially. I barely remember. <laughs> yeah. So after that, now he's coaching uh, Illinois State uh, basketball. Well, good for him. Good for so him. You know, good, good, good for him on that. Um. Yeah, so, so, uh, see, like, like, yeah, that's that's my whole thing. Like the like good example out of the Bamas you just mentioned from Duke. The one Bama I like, I respect Shane Battier. I think he's one. He was one of the best off the bench guys in the NBA. Had that fucking Girl smug talk. look on his fucking smug. face. I hate every I fucking hate time. Him. But I think real talk, Shane Battier formed, um, carved out a very good career in the NBA. I think he really did a very good. Yeah, I think he. Very, Especially very for the Grizzlies. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did he want to? Ch- he didn't want to ship. He didn't want to ship. This uh, he did with, the, with, the heat, with the Heat. The Heat. Yeah. Yeah. He won a ship with the Heat. So yeah, yep. yeah. I I have no ill will to Shane Battier, but Shane Battier on the Dukes. Ooh, I wanted to murder him. I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, dude, because you remember he retired that year before 2001 when he beat Maryland in the Final Four. And I was like, I'm glad his ass is gone so Maryland can win a championship. And then, oh, two, bam, Maryland wins. I was like, thank you. you Betty's you gone. Hear, do you want to hear a secret? I knew he was going to win the second he said he was going to the NBA. I knew he was going to win. Every, every Maryland fan was like, I could oh, my God. He would because – those two years, that nigga was a terrorist. He was a t- <laughs> like Maryland plays Duke. Oh, hold on, fuck. hold on. Hey, 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 shout out to all my all Tar Heels fans. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about because he crushed y'all too. <laughs> Good lord. Shane Batty, like I said, I I like I have no ill will to Shane Batty right now. I'm I'm cool with his career. And the same thing goes with Carlos Boozer, because I didn't like Boozer all through through Duke and I didn't like him till probably his fifth year in the NBA. And I really realized how, yeah, Carlos is not that bad. Did you see that little Beijing he got? He rocking right now, the all black. <laughs> Did you see that? You know it's what? Like, you know what? Dude, you every, see it, you be like, yo, Carlos, for real. Carlos for Boozer real. playing as good as he d- he did in the NBA. It just disappointed me that Lonnie Baxter couldn't get that same, couldn't get to that same level. Unfortunately, it was his birthday yesterday. It was his birthday the day uh, the day before yesterday or something like Who? that. Yeah. Lonnie Baxter, actually. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it was kind of a shake. I actually like Lonnie Baxter because, like I said, him and Boozer were kind of like those centers, those big centers and stuff. And it was like kind of a shame that Lonnie Baxter didn't hit that level of longevity in the NBA like Lonnie, Carlos did. I still think Lonnie, I think I think Lonnie just wasn't built for the NBA like that. Like some people are just not there. Like Chris Wilcox, I think he could have got there, but I think he wasn't disciplined enough because he wasn't disciplined at Maryland. So he got with the then he got with like the Clippers and it's like oh Chris Wilcox playing for the Clippers and then he just kind of faded off and I was like oh I, I will say this he did have a real good year with the PG Sonics before they dispersed I thought they were great man I thought he was great with um Durant and Russ when they first started out yeah I I have not I have no I have not you know they were great I think I I, I felt but, Chris but yeah, Wilcox just, kind of he just didn't get he he got enough he got more of a shape than Lonnie Baxter but like I said Baxter. He won built. He won built for it. 
I just, yeah. I just think he wasn't built for it. That's all that is. I, I think Chris, but the thing of it is, I think what Chris though, what disappointed me is that I felt he should have stayed in, in, in Maryland for a little bit more because after they won that championship, he was like, fuck it. I'm going in the draft. And I was like, Oh, don't he, do this. Wilcox. He, 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 he went right for the money. And here's the funny thing. I mean, the Clippers um, paid him a lot of money to be fair. So I, I understand that. Yeah. I remember we, uh, I mean, me and my boys, <laughs> me and my boys, we were, we were talking about that. And I tell us, I laugh because we used to always had these discussions and this ironic now working to the sports show. I'm doing it now, but, um, <laughs> but we used to always have these conversations, these really good conversations about where these bamboos is going to fall at in the first place. Yeah. And I remember we were talking about, um, we were talking about, um, Chris Wilcox and like, like we was talking about how good, how, how DC was and all that. We was like, he should have just stayed. And we was like, well, if he stayed, he would have dropped in the draft. He probably would have never even been in the NBA because some people jump to the NBA because it ain't going to be no other time. If you mm-hmm. stay there, if you stay there in college, your stock is going to drop. Next thing you know, you're going to be paying in Puerto Rico only making 10, only making like 10 I mean, because I think that's year. probably, and I think that that's probably why he did because, I mean, you're coming off a of win at championship, so your stock is already high. Mm-hmm. You got three other seniors on the team. Like, because I think Wilcox, Steve Blake, um, Juan Dixon, and Lonnie Baxter were all in the first round. Yeah, they all, all of them were. All yeah, all of them were first round, and they just got drafted to various teams. So that I guess that makes sense and stuff because it's like, fuck it, we we were on a championship team, draft me, and it's like, all right. The thing that gives you though, that's like, it's still funny. I still think Juan Dixon show how big of a player Juan Dixon was. Juan Dixon was so he's undersized for the NBA and lasted a little bit. So good yeah, Steve, Steve Blake was probably the only one that lasted out of that Maryland squad and because stuff. He, because I'll be honest with you, and I hate Point guard. like that. I hate saying it like that. Out of all the Bambas, he was the only one with value to me. I mean, I he's a point guard. Like that. That's a that's a valuable player. position in the NBA at that time. And he it's was like good, you know, and here's on top of that, he was a good point guard. Like compare him to somebody else that came out around that same time, Jordan Farmar. He was way better than Jordan Farmar. He knew how to play the mm-hmm. game way better than Farmar. That's why I was happy as shit. But, that I he thought was Farmer, but every, everybody in they would say up there, Farmar was a beast in college. We thought he was going to do something. That's why I was like, I was happy as shit to see Steve Blake uh, playing alongside fucking Kobe. I was like, yes. Oh, man, I love Thank you. you. I love seeing that Bama with Kobe, man. I love seeing <laughs> Steve Blake out there, man. I loved it. Yo, yo, man. Did Steve win any? He didn't run a ring with the Bama. Nah, 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 nah. But he was there during those. <laughs> it's just funny seeing him during the highs and lows of like because it was him and Juan Dixon for a while they played on the Wizards for a hot they minute they played on the Wizards together and they played which, on the that kind of boosted the Wizards for a minute because everybody's like oh shit the Terps you know they the squad they're back on the same team and blah 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 and then it's like oh yeah Steve Blake's going to the uh, Lakers and it's like oh <laughs> I can say I had the I had the pleasure of seeing both of them play for the Wizards and I had the pleasure of seeing both get traded over to um the Blazers and being in the stadium when they came back Mm-hmm. When they came back to DC because when they came back, they got on the court. Man, everybody was on their feet for almost a solid three minutes, giving them a hat. Stan Novation. It was touching his head. But he's playing Euro ball right now, so you know, good on him. Who? Who? Steve Blake. Steve Blake playing Euro. That band played for the Wizards from 2003, played for the Blazers, played for the Bucks. Oh, and, and coach for the Phoenix Suns last year. Play for the look, play for the Nuggets, play for the Blazers again, play for the Clippers, play for the Lakers. Play for the Warriors, play for the Blazers, play for Portland, and last and uh, his last year playing was for the Sydney Kings. Yeah, Sydney Kings. Now, well, last year he was assistant coach. So, so what are he at now? I know uh, Juan Dixon is still Coppin State to a basketball coach. Mm-hmm, I heard about that not too long so, ago. Man. He's actually a pretty decent coach, from what I'm hearing, because that team used to be L garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we already we talked about that too. How Compton has been um like turning the tide for themselves, man. At least, at least as far as basketball. I mean, they. I mean, you go from three and twenty five, and you're like, you know what? Get Juan Dixon's ass here right now. <laughs> so let's see this. That nigga played for the Wizards, Blazers, Raptors. I remember he played for the Raptors. I remember he played for Pistons. He was a bum when he played for the Pistons. <laughs> and um, uh, now I don't remember his last year with the Wizards though. I, I do remember because at that point, that's when he just said, "I'm retiring. I'm out." Yeah, he played in Greece. That looks he played in Greece, played in Spain, and played in now he's on the Turkey. real house. Now he's on the real housewives of Potomac. Are so, you dead serious? Yeah, his wife is uh is the chick on Real Housewives of Potomac. Now the one thing I do remember that he did coach the Firebirds. He coached the, he coached the um he called DC he coached on uh, uh, UDC. He yeah the girls team at UDC, which by which 
kit catches me off guard and people don't know this even in dc yes udc is a real college mm -hmm. yes it is a black college yes they do have a basketball team hold on hold on hold on <laughs> See, I'm thinking of. I don't think it's a black college, though. I don't think it's a really okay, black I'm thinking, college. But, you know. I was thinking to the Golden Retrievers when they beat Virginia and shit that year. I was thinking you meant that. I was like, yeah, it is. It's, it's, you know, not that one and stuff. But, um, oh, breaking news. Um, John Cheney died. Um, Temple. Yeah, Temple coach. He died. Oh, man. Respect. How long? Died. Like, what was it today? Was it yesterday? Today. Today. He died today. 89 years old. 89. Wow, John Chain looked old when I was. <laughs> Bro, he's always looked old. He, he's the it's the Morgan Freeman effect. It's like that. He goes. Is that the the, the bit bags under his eyes? All the rest of it. You want to talk about a coach that I would love to play for? Yeah, John Chain was a great coach, man. This dude he coached him coach. since nineteen eighty fucking two. Wait a minute, was he still coaching them? Temple Owls, nineteen eighty two to two thousand six. Yeah, I don't. So I'm about to say, I'm about to still, say, that's a time. long as goddamn time. Some, but you gotta think about it. a lot of those coaches held on to those jobs. Oh, wasn't uh, what's his face? Uh, that coach Maryland was he like coaching for a long ass time? No, oh. no, Gary Williams. Remember, he came in after um, the by um, um, bias died. So that's like what 1990, 91, 92. Actually, that's still a long time because he retired like three years I'll after this. I looked at it. I looked at it. He still had his. He he still was there. He's, he was there probably just as long as um Cheney to a degree in terms of the years. Ah uh, no 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 no! I think Cheney was way back, way way longer than him, man. This is this is eighty two to two thousand six that he was coaching there. Two thousand six, um, he did um eighty two to two thousand six. Yeah, just 80. as long because he coached um Mer Mer uh, no, eighty nine, eighty nine to twenty eleven. Yeah, I'm about to say yeah, same, same, month. same month. Just a look, just a couple of years later. Well, yeah, you know, six cool years later. <laughs> yeah, man, Gary Williams. Yeah, be yeah, Gary Williams retired. Yeah, I would have retired too. Yeah, John yeah. Cheney, though, man, this dude's record is, dude. Let, let's let's be real about this. He has the type of record that is consistent, and there's a reason why he still stayed as a coach because he had a winning season every year, and his team always was in the NCAA conference, and a couple of times they were in NIT. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he always every year, it. like there was never a year where they missed. It. I think his first year coaching, he missed it. But every year since then, always an NCAA championship, not he not was, championship, but the, the actual he, tournament. He was seventy. He was seven hundred and forty-one to. He was he won seven hundred and forty-one games to three hundred and twelve losses. Jesus, that is actually a very good, very impressive, fucking yeah, God, Lee, that's amazing. He won coach of the year five times in Atlantic 10, which D got to say is the Atlantic 10. Yeah. Only got you, ain't lying. Gary, you ain't lying. Gary Williams is kind of behind him on the fucking wins and losses. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course on the wins and losses. Damn. I kind of forgot yeah, about that. Damn. I have severely thing. underestimated Gary Williams. I'm like, ah, shit. Huh. Huh. The only <laughs> thing you can say is this, that that um that John Chaney, you can really say this. He really just never won the big one. He always got this. You can, you can say well, he, he, he won a Division II championship with Chaney State when he was coaching them. Yeah, but still, that's you know that's yeah, team. but you know still, that's a division two. He but. was a co he was an AP coach of the year in '88, also, so that's a big thing too, you know. But that being said, yeah, John Cheney had a had a serious career, man. You cannot you cannot um, deny what he did. And I, I remember, like I said, here's the thing. This is this shows you how many times that like, actually how many times Tipper won their damn division. That, yeah, hold up. I know that is a good one. If they going into the they go into the NCAA conference every year, it's like yeah, huh. that means that they won their conf they won, they won their uh, division, man. Right? Well, had conference. to conference, or they at least got in due to being high ranked in some way. Because you can you don't have to necessarily win your conference championship to get in. You just have to have no, a good record. When you're in Atlantic Ten, yes, you do. You have to win. The oh, game. okay. I thought you yeah, did. When you're in Atlantic Ten, yes, you have to because Atlantic I thought it was like the ACC where it's like all right, whatever, da 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 da, you know. So Temple, so let's go to eighty six. Good lord, man! They, get, they give me everything else, but they'll be, I'm trying to see how many championships they won. Oh, yeah, you're right nine, because it was okay. So I'm looking at the eighty six one, seventeen and one. Yeah, they won it. Yeah, so eighty six, they won the championship. All right. They won their conference. Wait a minute, he's been there since eighty four, right? Eighty two. Eighty two. So if you look at the eighty three, eighty four season. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They won their they won their conference nine times. <laughs> Jesus. Won the, won the conference tournament. They won their conference tournament 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six times under his own watch. God damn. Yeah. And they and let me see. They went to the playoff. They went to the uh, NCAA tournament 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001 under Mr. Chain. That is what you call a good fucking record. That's why he was in the hall. That's why he's in the basketball hall of fame and real talk. That's why he's in heaven right now, coaching a whole lot of dead bo- basketball players and and John Thompson's calling him ugly or some shit. I don't know. I know they joked. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I know they talk, man. They, they they look Philly to DC. Oh yeah, they had a correspondence with each other. <laughs> they, had, they had to. Hey, I'm gonna be in Philly, man. I'm playing Villanova. You, you want dinner? Yeah, yeah. I'll beat you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so here's the thing. Um, there was a moment, and it, it, it's back in 1994. Uh-huh. Temple is playing Massachusetts. And uh, final score was 50, 56, 55. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're rivals. Temple, Temple and Massachusetts, they're UMass, rivals yeah. and stuff. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're UMass, they're rivals and stuff. Um, rivals to the point to where John Chaney was literally about to beat the shit out of uh, UMass coach Capareri during a um, press conference. I don't know if you saw the video. I, I think I know about this. <laughs> I think I know of it. I didn't see the fight. Are you are you digging what what I'm thinking already? Are you going to give me the video? I have the video. Trying to reach over and grab this nigga. I have the video. I have the video. In fact, hold on, let me find it. Oh my god, I did I see this. I'm trying to think. Did I see this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me find. Dude, it was like when somebody brought it up. I was like, that happened. I was like, it did happen. That that, that happened. I knew something like that happened because it was during the time um, Marcus Camby was. Was um was right. at the school or something? I'm not really sure. All right, now we're gonna play it. Two, Shane fires back. What? I just got my ass blasted for giving him hell down in West Virginia. John Calipari. I oh, forgot Calipari voted. Uh, uh, three um, three questions. And you pick him out and single him out. You can't get that damn nigga brother guy. Shut up, guy. You can't get that brother guy. I remember this now. Some things never cease to amaze. <laughs> Again, that that that's some bad blood right there for a rivalry. God damn. <laughs> Calipari uh, used to coach them, man. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, that's I mean... funny. That's funny because I remember that shit. I remember him pointing and trying to reach up there, and he stopped it. Oh man, you know, D. What do you have to say about Mr. Calipari now? Oh, very simple. I'm enjoying you destroying <laughs> Kentucky basketball right now. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> It's like, I don't know. Actually, he's all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all good. Um, so, NFL. Um, the, the playoffs were fun. It was yes, fun. It was uh, certain certain things. Certain thi- Actually, no, before we go there. All right. So, there's a couple of things that's happened on the trading block here. Um, as we said, Matthew Stafford is going to basically be gone from Detroit at this stage. Oh, um, yeah, where he's going, who knows? Um the Washington football team fan base wants Matthew Stafford. Why? I don't, I don't know. No, I don't want him here. <laughs> they go break why him. Would you, why would you? Why would you tell that that man who has been in a look, Darlene? We've been we've been with each other for years, but I think it's time for us to see other people, and then tell him to go see the ratchet chick down the, <laughs> down the street. Why would you do that? I I don't know. That um, man just got out of a long. Hard Turn. relationship. He's he's ready to move on and stuff. Um, you know, you know so what? D's gonna say it because I heard there's a lot of rumor about that mm-hmm. about where because Deshaun Watson ran his you know he's been running his mouth and a lot of people hate it. D personally fucking loves it, but at the same time I do see it at the same time of that hurting your stock because you know NFL still kind of a plantation. So anyway. there's still blood in the water because um you know Washington yeah. fan base wants Deshaun Watson too, and I'm like, can you afford Deshaun Watson, sir? 
I'm, I, I mean, you know, I know, I know Snyder would love to open up in purse, but I'm like, what do you have to give up to get Deshaun Watson? You know what I'm hearing now? Now, this is what I I'm hearing. Heard. The Browns want Deshaun Watson. Though. I heard this is what I heard. This is what I heard. I don't know why the Browns won. They already got Baker Mayfield. They're fine. But uh, this is what I heard. They're saying that Texas saying we want at least at least three draft picks, first round draft picks. They're well within their rights of asking that because Deshaun is very healthy, no very injuries, healthy. no injuries. Very healthy, very ready to win for your team. What do you? What do you? What do you? Dolphin want fan to base are very. Uh, somebody was like the Dolphins, but the Dolphins fan base fan base thankfully were like, yeah, but we're doing good with Tua. And also, we got to give up all that for what? Too much of they, they shot off too much of their um their stock with all their back um with all their back draft picks that they got, but. They're building a team right now, so they're fine. I Deshaun, I mean, I've heard the Jets, and I'm like, I but mean, you know, but yeah, I but he wants to go to the Rams, and D saying no. If anybody goes to the Rams, it's Matthew Stafford. Ooh, and I yes. To myself, but then I thought to myself, hey D, does, does LA deserve anything? No, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Fuck them. So, so that being said, I'm going for this, and I think it's a stupid thing that I'm going to say right now. I will admit that. Hey Matt, I say retire. Matt's gonna want to get a ring though. Walk away. Matt, learn something from two great Detroit Lions before you. Look, learn from Megatron and <laughs> learn from Barry Sanders. Go Walk home. Away. Walk away. Go home and be Go a family home. man. <laughs> Go home. Matt, I I understand you didn't win nothing. Take your eventually, millions of dollars and go home. Eventually, eventually, I know how you feel, Matt. But in 2049, you're going to get a phone call from the NFL saying you're going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I know everybody. So he ain't doing enough. I know he hasn't. I'm trying to convince this man to retire. Okay, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you got those, those things happening and stuff. Um, there's rumors going around that Dak does indeed want to stick around with Cowboys. But again, as with anything that we've said probably pri prior to this and stuff, it's again money. So it's just no, like there ain't no money now. This nigga can't. No, here's the worst part about it. He's gonna have to say yes to whatever the Dallas gets him. But I mean, he he said I want to stay at Dallas. So, but I think at least I think there, I'm gonna say this. At least Shannon, there's that. Shannon said it at the best though. It's like yeah, but Dak, um, like you said. They're gonna have to take you whatever you give. As long as you, I think it's gonna be Dak is gonna probably do the thing where it splits the middle. It's like, all right, you're not fucking me with this contract, but I know I gotta do something for you to beef it up a little bit. All they gotta do, all I will say is this: have it so, have it basically have it so. I don't know how they really um, structure that as far as um like money wise, but make sure whatever y'all gonna give me, let me get it within two years. Let me get yeah. like let me get a two year con year contract with y'all. Yeah. After that two years, I can opt out and go. With, like, at least give me a, if you're going to give me a three, four year contract, fine. But give me the option to opt out my second year. Yeah. The only reason why, and like, that's the only thing I ask for. Whatever money, whatever you give me, because you remember, because like I said, if he can have the um, uh, he's had the option to opt out of his contract. That means Dallas has to match whatever else somebody <laughs> else has. So, in my opinion, if I burn it up and fuck around and win a Super Bowl. With y'all, pay me my money. I'm just saying, whatever. Y'all gonna have to pay me my money, or I'm a this sounds. Like, yo, and even then, no, no, nigga, if I fuck around and get y'all to the NFC Championship, uh, uh, I think I'm gonna opt out. Oh, you want to restructure? Okay, cool. What's up? Fine, <laughs> but that's the only thing he got. Outside of that, dog, if they want to give you twenty five thousand, twenty five million, I'm sorry, nigga, you gonna have to take that twenty five million. You were worth thirty. You look in these opinion, you worth forty. But you fucked around and rolled your ankle in the worst way in front of everybody. It wasn't even his fault, but it was like fuck. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. In a perfect world, I would say no. You still, you still worth what you got. Not to these crackers out here. <laughs> no, no, you're no. worth, but yeah. Massa Jones don't like that shit. Mm -mm. <laughs> but use a lame coon in his eye. You gonna have to work but, yourself up. But low key, low key, I find it funny that Jerry Jones changed changed his tune up about Dak because you remember after Dak got injured, it was on that. Oh man, I don't know if we're gonna be able to pay him. And now after oh, the season man. kept going, it's like oh, shit. Maybe I do gotta. Yeah, yeah. You see, fuck. Andy ain't the one, ain't it? Andy ain't the one. <laughs> I will say this though. 
Shout out to Andy Dalton, except that last game. Fuck you for just disappearing on me like that, Andy. But you know what? <laughs> now I know why you never. I said it. I said, hey, Chris. For Chris, Chris. Thank you for disappearing on this day, Andy. But real talk, <laughs> now I know why you never won a playoff game, bitch. Anyway. But, but D, but D, <laughs> blessing in disguise. Can you imagine the Cowboy fan base melting down with the Philly, with when, when Philly dropped that game against the Skins? I'm glad <laughs> Dallas didn't win that game. I'm glad they didn't win that last. I would because no, no, could you imagine we made the damn playoffs and I got to hear all these dumbass good old boys? <laughs> Dalton is <laughs> the truth, he's the I future. I'll tell you something, what that some bitch named Dalton, man. Boy, how he can throw better, man. <laughs> unlike Dak, he's still out here for us. I'm like, yo, yeah, man, it's bad enough. I got to hear these old black motherfuckers. <laughs> Now, it's now. always it's always our fan base. I think it's something in the water in DC. I'm sorry, they hate every quarterback. That every, time ever do, have. every time you do, every Dallas fans in DC, man, we don't need that. The fuck is you smoking? Because <laughs> Dallas fans, look, D D D D. See, Dallas fans in DC are ungrateful assholes until they beat Washington and they see the truth. We are, yeah, no, no, no. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> not me, not me. No, no, no. no that's what I'm saying. Shut the fuck up. You don't know us. <laughs> D, D, again. To say, again we're, we're, we're wishy, look, Chris, what are you trying to say? We're wishy washy and we couldn't stick with the, with the team that we were given. So we look for the best team that was out there. And it was a I still what go back to, to I still go back to that game. Redskins were up 23. Was it 23 17, right? And okay. Romo, it was in the rain. Romo drove him down the field. He threw like two ones to to um uh what's his face um what was the wide receiver um um Creighton. It wasn't, it wasn't Creighton at the time that no did. um something Williams um um not Williams oh Roy um, Roy no not Roy. no Roy Williams the one after him um oh Terrence Williams Terrence, yeah, Terrence Williams, Williams. Really through the Terrence Williams three times I'm like so Washington you just gonna let Terrence Williams wide open three times huh let that man beat you like that. <laughs> then he got down to the end threw it to Dez bam Dallas is at the fifteen I was like ah oh, shit. Ah oh, shit. Fourth down. Romo pulls back. Romo does his fucking roll cancel. Those are the fucking DeMarco Murray. Touchdown. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Twitter that year, that day. I don't think you were on Twitter that day, D. It went from fuck Tony Romo to oh my god, the god Tony <laughs> Romo. <laughs> I was like, dude, five minutes ago, y'all were like, fuck Romo. No, and now no, I'm, I was oh on god. I was on Twitter enough to know at the time that <laughs> Facebook, Romo, I know Facebook Romo was like saying like too. literally no, no like at that time Romo literally had to ha- have to have these these fucking Joe Montana ass games. <laughs> Just to gauge a reaction out of any of these ungrateful motherfuckers. Oh, dude, you remember that? You remember that one Monday night game where the uh, fucking um, old boy from New York, New York Giants coach botched up the timeouts or whatever and oh, shit. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah, we called the fucking timeouts. <laughs> that was like I'm sitting back, like, did you just give Tony Romo a minute thirty to get down the field? No, Good no, luck. That one coughing. That one coughing. What coughing? No, what oh, McAdoo. Dumbass, no, McAdoo. McAdoo. It was McAdoo. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember the nickname. Yeah. That dumbass motherfucker. He had to take the second time out. Everybody. That was so funny. That was so funny, by the way. I remember that we had that show on. We didn't talk about this. It was so funny because everybody literally on the Giants bitch. Who, who had timeout? Who said that? <laughs> Even, even Eli was like, I didn't call timeout. What the fuck's going on? Yo, that's bad when Eli looking like that. Don't look at me. What are you talking about? Dude? I didn't say timeout. I didn't say shit. I remember the Dallas sideline. Like, are they serious? Are they serious right now? Dude, Jason even though Garrett, it was so serious, Jason Garrett stopped clapping and immediately ran out and started yelling at everybody, like, no, do that, do that. Don't he do changed, nothing. He changed up the whole play. <laughs> Dude, even though what's his face? Slow walk these niggas up the damn field after that. I was like, yo, dude, because uh, who was who was the who was the who's the NBC dude? Um, the not, um, who's the uh, NBC? Uh, guy? I'm fucking on uh, Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, Chris Collinsworth was like, I don't know what's happening on the Giants bench, but you, here's a guy out. that just no, no, you gotta do that. Now, here's a guy that just called a timeout for no reason. <laughs> and you, oh, that's what it was. He's like, and they leave a minute thirty five for Tony hey, Romo. I remember, I remember Chris like. Uh, you know what? There, you know, I think a lot of people like we look at Tony Romo and all this, but you do like he's he has the most comebacks right now. Now all of the NFL right now, a minute thirty five on that it, clock. And I know this is like there's still a left. Why would you do that? There are just some people, Chris. There are just some people, like I said, and that's how sad that was. 
Like that's how sad. Look, I'm gonna even go that far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my fan out of me and say this: Romo wasn't that big of a killer. But why would you do that? To me? <laughs> it's like you don't do that. Like, you can't take the fan out of me and just like, yeah, hey, look. No, this one of those. That's you don't... too much time for Tony Romo, bro. This is basically <laughs> don't give Romo an inch; he'll take it. <laughs> oh my God, that's why I love Dak, man. Because Dak, that, <laughs> that motherfucker. I'm a, God. We lost that game, but we should have won it. This mother. We had only like, like I think it was when the Saints beat us that last. Yeah. Time. And <laughs> I never forget. Dak came back, scored two touchdowns after that. The Saints defense was like, like what is going on? <laughs> And then it was like, all right, Dallas defense, dude, stop on his Dallas defense. What? <laughs> the <laughs> pressure. Defense, what? Who has, been, who has been chasing Mike Thompson the whole game? I'm sorry, you want to do what? what? Nah, nigga, we about to lose this game. It's 45 seconds. Nah, we about to lose this game, bro. Look at Dak is just over the sideline. You, know, like... you played a good game, though, bro. Yo, Dakota played a good game, though. <laughs> Nah, that was us. That was us. That was us. That was us. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, so the NFL playoffs were hilarious because I kind of was taking the piss out of Washington fans during that Tampa Bay game, but at the same time, I couldn't help but sit there and say, you know what, Washington, you played a good game, but it's Brady. What did you nah, think was going to happen? That was, they're not even gonna, they was going to lose. You knew that. No, no, I knew they were going to lose, but I was like, Everybody in the Washington, everybody on the team, Washington team, were just hoping to against like, oh, we might have a chance. I'm like, no, guys, if you're not touch the defense didn't even touch Brady. That was the thing. It's like if you're not touching Brady, you're gonna lose. I'm just saying. Let me get this shit straight. Y'all really thought y'all was going down there in Tampa. It was gonna change the fact. I will give them this. They played, they, played times. they played in Washington. They played in Washington. Oh yeah, they did play in Washington. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't, of course, it didn't fucking matter. It didn't really fucking matter. Yeah, the team had hope, and then Chris, immediately, Chris, 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 Chris. I know it said. Um, I know it said home field advantage. The only way any of the home field advantage would have made sense if it was in Dallas or in Philly. Okay, there's the only two places in the Dallas NFC at least have fans. In the that's what I'm saying. In the NFC East, those are the only two places that, Dallas that, really have, that have. That's what I'm saying. We have fans there, but still, those are the only two places in the NFC East where home field is a kind of a threat because yeah it's Dallas but you want to but here's the thing I noticed about people y'all want to do too much in Dallas and try to crush us and you overdo it and y'all fucking fall in your face which is fine same but, in Philly oh that didn't happen Donovan McNabb will have something to say about that last part but anyway yeah. Philly Philly same thing on Philly niggas then they can walk up in Philly and do that I'm a, I'm saying this as somebody that respects somebody in my division don't you walk into Philly thinking that's a win no, it's not. Never it's all. not Lambo. Let me make it very clear. It ain't Lambo in the wintertime. But still, don't think you can just waltz in there and think you want to win on Lincoln. No, 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 no. That's a serious game every time you go up to Philly, man. You have to play the battles. But the thing is, it's like Tampa came in there and they did what they had to do as usual, though. Their defense is basically what, like, wanted I mean, for them. Their defense I mean, came in and they I mean, shut that shit down. <laughs> They shut that shit down. So Washington lost and stuff. And the, and the thing of it is, when Brady did those two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, that's when I knew it was done. It was fucking done. Yeah. It, it was over and stuff. So it was like, all right. Um, and then like the Seahawks, whew, the Rams put it on the fucking Seahawks. I was like, yo, so Seattle, where are you at right now? What are you? Uh on the on a on a working time sports show uh messenger board that we got for ourselves. Um I went in, I went in because y'all know me here on Working Town Sports Show. That was my team to go to the Super Bowl. If you want to talk about D getting that mad, that was a dark at, horse. If you want to talk about D getting mad at everybody, I got what the fuck. Russ played like shit. Defense Russ played like made, shit. <laughs> that may have been the worst game. I'm, a, I'm, a, I say the worst for a reason because you're on, you on primetime TV. It's time for y'all to win. It's time for y'all to look. They they took losses going into the playoffs and all the rest of that shit. It's time for them to clamp down and actually flex on these motherfuckers. Y'all can beat the Rams. I seen y'all beat the what the hell are all y'all doing? Even what even, is all of you doing? What are you doing? Even Russ I mean, and his throwing, under throwing, nobody blocking, nobody tackling correctly. Run game shit. The run game terrible. Oh, I just loved how y'all let the Rams just look like they were the '99 Rams. Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey, fucking doing doing the Harlem Shake on the sidelines, I happy mean, as shit. Beat the <laughs> I mean, 
DK Metcalf over there. Hey, 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 Jalen Ramsey had your number, dog. It is what it is. What the fuck? You let Jalen Ramsey, a dude that I still question. I actually I ain't going to question him. I think Jalen Ramsey's actually a beast. I just ain't a big fan of him. But that being said, you let that nigga shut you down. The biggest, the dude that has the, the, the most of talk, right, the most talkative cornerback right now in the NFL has just shut you up. And you're out here trying to talk. Sick your big, get your big gorilla built ass down. Oh my God. Yo, if I was Pete Carroll, I would have slapped the living shit out of DK Metcalf, yeah? I would have just slapped him. I, I don't care if D, yeah, DK Metcalf looked like he can crush me. I know that. I would have slapped the living crap out of him, man. What type of football is that, man? But I would have treated these bambas like they were in high school again, yeah? That was pathetic. Wow. And now um, the Bills retired Phillip Rivers. Uh, <laughs> like, what you want me to say? <laughs> D- D- uh, Denzel's not on our show, man, so I can't I can't do that right now. Denzel, how you feel about that, Denzel? Well, it's time for Diamond Dogs to see our favorite quarterback. You know, I liked him. Yada 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 yada. Goof troop. That was Denzel. It'd be nice if he. <laughs> it'd be nice if he resigned to the Chargers just to retire as a Charger. I would have loved that. I would love to see him like a gesture like that, though. You yeah, know, I mean, Emmitt Smith did it with Cow- the Cowboys and stuff like that. That was Here's nice. the difference. <laughs> There's a reason behind that. Eric. Well, you play with Arizona, but you know. But no, no, no. There's a reason behind that. Because, and I say this with no prejudice to any of the teams, Patriots, 49ers, Cowboys, Packers, Eagles, Raiders, and Ste- Raiders, Steelers, and let's just throw the Ravens in there. Yeah. Those those places. And uh, yeah, the Giants, too. And the Giants. Yeah, Giants. And the Giants. Those places, Yeah. There's history with these teams. There's prestige with these teams. And yeah, if you want it, like there's pride you can take in. I retired a 49er. I retired a Packer. I retired a Cowboy. I retired a Raider. There's pride in that. I don't give a fuck about the Chargers. <laughs> I'm sorry. The only other nigga up here is Kalen Winslow and Antonio Gates. Actually, you know what? Junior Seau. Junior Seau. Actually, you know what? If I was Philip Rivers, I wouldn't want to be a part of that. Well, now, now. I would want to be a part of that, yeah. Hey, so. hey, hey, hey. Buffalo came in hot. And the dog child of the Colts, nigga. I mean, and the, and the thing of it is, the, Philip Rivers had a shot to actually get the Colts to win the game. And it just, the def, the, the, the Buffalo defense kicked in when they did at the what perfect it, time. What it, what it seemed to me was one of those, that last drive where he was, it was, it was such desperation mode. Bro, that whole that whole entire like this is the last drive of Philip Rivers. What's he gonna do? The last two drives, to be honest. But yeah, that being said, it felt to me, and I hate saying it like that. That was just a metaphor for the last four years of his career. (sighs) You you look, I know you have the arm, I know you have the ability, I know you have it in your mind how to beat that team. Stop, bro. (laughs) Y'all lost. Yeah. And that's that that to me, unfortunately, that's how Philip Rivers looks like to me. And I get why there's a bunch of bambas that say he shouldn't go in the Hall of Fame just because of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean Philip but, Rivers is awesome. He deserves to be in the hall. I no, not first ballot. Let me make it very clear. Hey, Shannon Sharp ballot. said the best. Shannon Sharp said the best. Philip Rivers, great quarterback that came at the wrong time with Tom Brady and fucking uh uh uh, uh, uh Manning, Peyton Manning. It's like Peyton ah Manning, shit. Andrew Brees, you came in. <laughs> Drew came Brees, in, Peyton Manning, and stuff, and then like, and I didn't at a, at a rough time, man. And I didn't realize it until Shannon time. broke it down. It was like, yeah, out of all three of them, how many times did all three of them get into the playoffs and get to a Super Bowl? Ben Roethlisberger, also. and Pitt, yeah, and Big Ben. So it's like, yeah, yeah, Phil Rivers didn't have a chance. <laughs> then you had this, then this Milano nigga came out of nowhere. Then Patrick Mahomes is. <sighs> You haven't all the, there's like, a window. Sucks. There's there's a it window. Sucks. It's a window for everybody, like you just said. It's a window. There's a window, you know. And and like I said, it happened with it's Romo. We, we talked about this multiple times with Romo. There there was windows, and like, it's just you know Romo. What it, what happened with Romo was way different than Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers to me was a way better quarterback than Romo. Oh yeah. One and number two, it's just like they both had the same thing stop them. Either either their the way they played got in the way of them winning, or Dog, the the football guys don't want you to have any. Don't they ain't giving you no love right now. Yeah, it's one of the two. Same circumstances for both those quarterbacks. When you mm-hmm. okay. Romo was injury with with uh, Philip Rivers, it's no. Sorry, 
<laughs> Tom Brady's there. What you want me to do? No, sorry. The Ravens defense is going to have to have to hurt you. I'm sorry. Looks like it's the it, it looks like it's Rapplesburger, <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger's time. So <sighs> it, it it always is somebody in front of him, man. So D D D. What are the Titans? Hmm? What are the Titans? Oh, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to understand that. I can that. tell you exactly what they are. Um, they are a seven and nine team. Yeah, I know what their real record was. Fuck you. They're always a seven and nine team. <laughs> And it seems, it just seems they only have one good player on a team. Or, you know, at least the defense doesn't play all the way or the offense is inept. Or Tannehill's doing what he always does. He has to play above and beyond. And, dude, you're an 84 at best. <laughs> <laughs> and this is oh, coming from man. a fan of Ryan Tannehill. So don't don't at me in there. Oh, oh I love Ryan. But that being said, dog. Oh, Look, you want to talk about a team that is fiercely mediocre and not going to win nothing. That's, I mean, that's they the they roll behind. Right. They roll behind. What's his face? Um, Derrick Henry. The Derrick Henry. Season. And that's actually and you can. Dude, the Ravens him. shut his big ass down. Yeah, I was like, holy dude, fuck! I told you, Chris, you can shut him down. You just can't have this nigga rolling. If he's rolling, either one of two things: a, oh, you're not hurting this, and we're letting you roll and run over us, or b. Holy shit, y'all ain't stopped this nigga and y'all ain't stopped this motherfucker the first 10 times he had the ball. Now he has confidence. <laughs> like what you But it also can't be helped that the Titans defense couldn't stop fucking uh uh what's his face for shit. <laughs> um, um stop, uh, Lamar. Lamar. I mean, it so yeah. Um we already talked about last episode. We talked about the fucking Browns and the Steelers. That shit was whoo, that shit was funny. Oh my god, that shit was funny, man. Who knew? Man, I just feel like okay, okay. I check this check this brilliant shit out. <laughs> Captain Fat Fuck had the goddamn nerve to say this. And I heard this yesterday and I almost <laughs> ran off the goddamn road. I'm not kidding you. I want to play next season. And I thought to myself, why? And this is what made me go off the road. If the Steelers agree to it, it's gonna be a 42 million hit against the salary cap. I'm like, y'all better not say yes. And guess what Dan Ro- that's what Art Rooney Jr. said. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to reconstruct it. No! Don't do that. <laughs> get rid of you have a chance to get rid of the reason why you guys have not been winning the last three seasons. This man that ran off, ran off the ran off. Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Both who are still in, who are basically in the Super Bowl right now. I, I'm going to say it. You, He's already ruined Juju. Oh, he's ruined Juju. Yep. He's uh-huh. ruined Juju. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, and this part hurts me the most, and I really mean this. You have sucked the life out of one of the best black coaches ever. Man, look. Okay. At least we know for right. At least, at least we know for right Ooh. now. At least we know for right now, he's not fired as a coach yet. Look, I'll be honest with you. If I'm, if I'm Mike, I'll be already on the on on the, on the PA turnpike, getting the fuck out. Of here. <laughs> cut the fucking cut to Mike on the fucking PA turnpike going yeah, towards I'll Maryland. At, <laughs> I'll, be on, he'll be at, I'll be at Breezewood right now over, over at the, the Hardys. Yeah, with the Hardys and Dairy Queen chilling, bro. Don't... <laughs> Son, uh-uh, I'm getting there. Hell about it. <laughs> if, I, if I might, I really mean it. There's nothing else there for him to do. His rah-rah bullshit don't work no more, nobody, no more. He can't control none of his players. The the, the I'm going to be really honest with you. If you really kind of notice that the front office don't back him up or do anything for him. So, yo, Mike, coach a team that needs it. Coach Dallas, yeah. I mean, Coach Dallas, we need you. We need you. You, you'll let you. Look, think about it, Chris. He'll change us. He'll let Jerry Jones do all the little dumb Jerry Jones bullshit. And no, I'm like, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. So yeah, man, he be down on the sell out all the time. Yeah, Jerry, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like it's like this. Why would you say that, D? Well, what, what I seen of Mike Tomlin of the last ten years, he's used to dealing with asshole white men. So, <laughs> but is he deals to dealing with asshole? Is, is is Jerry used to dealing with a black man with a mind? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
Nate Newton still works for the Cowboys mm. as a commentator and stuff. So maybe I don't know. I actually I don't know. No. Something <laughs> I noticed. There's something I have noticed that is different. Now this is just me, and I could be wrong. And if anybody else has a different fan base, y'all can tell me if it's like that too. But something I noticed with Dallas is that the reporters for the DallasCowboy.com and all the rest of their stuff, all the writers and stuff that they have there, all the journalists there. I noticed something. They're very open on fuck Jerry Jones. I noticed that. It's the very shade of it there all. Is, you know, no, real talk. There are loyalists. There are a couple of them. There are loyalists. You can tell they're loyalists with Jerry. Or what I like to call middle of the road, I'm going to accept this diet racism. Of, oh, come on, guys. Jerry ain't that bad. And then you got the rest of them. Jerry, you stupid as shit. <laughs> Fucking Ian Mac, Ian, 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 Ian Rappaport, man. He he toes that line where he'll like he ain't gonna say fuck Jerry Jones. Be like Jerry Jones made some very questionable decisions. And I'm everybody, like everybody, everybody, everybody that works within the Dallas organization. That's the thing that gets me. Derek Eagleton has said something. Well, Jerry, uh, Jerry, Jerry, that's dumb. That's not right. You're a black player. Don't like that shit. And all the rest of the, I don't like yo, Derek, Derek. You have been working with the Cowboys for a while, brother. You are a good writer. They will get rid of you. You seen what they did to Skip Bayless, and they kept him at the locker room. <laughs> now, now, now. As don't we talk as too we, loud, man. As we continue, nigga, don't talk too loud. As we continue this, though, so we talked about the Rams dunishing the Seattle Seahawks. Then they turn around and laid a goose egg against the fucking damn Packers. Well, not really a goose egg, but the Packers defense came to fucking play because they wrecked the Rams' shit. Man, they 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 took off the velcro, and stopped rubbing their nipples. Like, oh man, I don't know what to tell you, man. I smell, I smell blood in the water. Let's go! Oh my god, they beat them up, man. Aaron Rodgers looked like he was about to win a Super Bowl after that. He looked like he was about, to, he was, yeah, it's his this year. I'm sorry, Tom. I know you're new to the division, new new to the conference, but uh, this here is mine right now, nigga. <laughs> I thought that was the way it was gonna go. What happened? I- I mean, I, like, just, what the fuck? no, no, I tell you what the fuck happened. We got on something this last past Sunday, we got one a very, very entertaining game. It was a good, good defense, good all that, man. Until something I noticed, Chris, around about right before halftime, I was like, geez, the referees and letting a lot of these pass interferences and other stuff go, huh? We'll talk about that the game, D. Huh? We'll talk about that game. Come, uh, next one. Come on, hurry. Come on next one, anyway, Ravens, Bills, Ravens. What are you with Lamar Jackson at this point? Oh man, they, and then Lamar got hurt, and then <sighs> and then the sweetest thing ever. All the Bills fans were giving him. They basically all the Bills fans were giving giving Lamar get well soon cards and well wishes and all the rest of that. And I was everybody was and somebody said this cynical bullshit, but I agree. Well, Buffalo is right there beside Canada, so yeah, they would like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, that black fella can play. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, oh, so sorry that you guys. I, I at the sorry after I say sorry, I can't always fuck up a Canadian. Accent, so sorry, so I can't do it again. again oh, oh, sorry. Um, hey, 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 feel right, eh? <laughs> but D, um, so let me tell you something. If you would have told me. That Chad Hen would be the MVP against the Browns. I would have told you to get the fuck out of my face. And yet, <laughs> Mahomes came out the game. Chad Hen came in the game, and he pulled some shit right, out guys. his ass. All right, guys, it's time to take it back. Back to when the Henmeister was the best. The Henmeister, the Henmeister, nigga, you ain't you the backup man? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Indiana five, guys, let's go, let's go. <laughs> But D, who knew Chad Hen? Look, Chad Hen is in a long list of white dudes that can actually run. But it's the funniest shit ever. Dudes, I'm just mad. You said long list of white dudes. He's a long list of white dudes that you're like, hey, he can actually run pretty decently. I just like the fact that that nigga. You had to think about it. I remember Chad. I remember he. Um, I remember when he first played in um, Michigan. I thought when he came out, I was like, oh, he gonna be a beast. He playing for um Dolphins. Oh shit, he might. Mm. <laughs> 12 years in the and NFL. Finally, and finally, his moment was him styling on the Buffalo Bills. Who knew? Who knew? It was like this. Oh, man, you might win the Super Bowl after this. I won the Super Bowl last year. You were here last year? <laughs> you were here? Did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Hey, man, who's our backup? Ah, damn it. Who's our big backup? Chad in. Chad, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Chad, get over here. Get over here. 
Let me tell you something. The Buffalo fan base were livid when Chad Hinn ran that fucking pass and they got the first down to win the game. They were sick to their stomach because all they had to do was just stop them and they would have had another shot and they were sick like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> they had that's a- the day. And that's the day that they finally learned. Oh, where are the losers? I forgot. We're, we're supposed to lose. Yeah. And Josh Allen uh, did his thing, but it's just like, yo. Josh Allen has, impro- has, has shocked me. Who knew after after going through Peterman? Because after thinking going through Peterman, I thought um Allen was just going to be just like him, and jo- and I'm thinking like Josh, dog, you know you're not going to get the way you play at UCLA is not going to be the same way you play here. Shut me the fuck up because he's good. He is good. Hey, I don't know if he's like the quarterback, but he's nice for them, man. Hey, guess guess who also came out of hibernation that game? Josh Norman. Ever since he got fucking got banished to the shadow realm by fucking what's his face. I was like, oh shit, Josh Norman plays. Damn, I haven't seen you in a minute. Hey, Josh, there you are. Hey, hey man, what happened to you, man? Oh, man. So, so, so when uh, Derek Henry, Henry grabbed you and threw you, threw you into Dimension X. Um, <laughs> hold on. What was it? Well, oh, God, fuck. I should know this. What's the little joke in, um, not the Phantom Zone. Is the Phantom Zone the joke of Superman? Phantom Zone. <laughs> We tossed your ass into the Phantom Zone. <laughs> Dude, I was watching the game. I was like, oh, shit, Josh Norman. Damn, I had seen oh, you. Oh, yeah. You know what? You know what? I got to be honest with you. I didn't know. Did you... <laughs> <laughs> he was playing. I didn't even know he played that game. Now, thankfully, thankfully, he wasn't the one that had to, that, that had to actually be in charge of tackling mm-hmm. Chad in. So, I was like, thankfully, no, you, no, you avoided no, no. an embarrassing moment there. No, no, no. But if I know anything about it, Josh Norman, he missed an assignment, so it don't fucking matter. <laughs> Speaking of which, oh man, oh boy, uh, Drew Brees, man, how does it feel to let old man Brady put you down? Who knew it was going to be Brady the one to put you, put the put the bullet in the back of old yellow's head? Who knew it was going to be? Because the way I always saw it, I thought it was going to be I, no real bullshit. This is no, this is no, this is no what's a fake, this is no shade, uh, but, but I really thought it was going to be Dak was going to be the one to do it. Hey, look. Hey, I dude. thought it was going to be Dak. It was either going to be Dak or Real Talk because I still think he's all right. I thought it was going to be Jared Goff. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, D. I don't think I don't think Breeze expected to end the game with a knee at the end of the game. I don't think he expected that shit. <laughs> just imagine how you look. You see somebody on a knee and thinking in the back of his head, "That's where you fucked up, Drew." <laughs> That's when you up. Brady takes a knee yeah, in the game. And Brady, could you imagine? Like, we don't see it on the field, but Brady takes a knee and stares at Breeze on the sidelines hard. <laughs> it's like, see, Breeze, you should have took a knee. You know, you just go to Drew, Drew. just slow to zoom, Drew. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. And you just see. No! <laughs> It's like ah, it's like when Kaiba got oh, hit yeah. with the <laughs> Yeah, it's just like that. It's just like that. Oh my god! I don't is Breeze gonna retire? Huh? He Breeze should. I think he is. He is retiring now. It's time for D's favorite thing Crap, in the world. Hey, it's the time, baby. <laughs> this is the this is the best one. This is the best part about all this. I've been told for I've been told for quite a while from some friends and and everybody else that. Um, um, Sean Payton is really not that good as a coach, and I'm starting to agree with them. I think next he is year, good. Next year is going to be the test because you're going to have no quarterback that's worth a hey, damn deal. Well, you got Winston. Maybe he can turn him around. You know. <laughs> Stop talking stupid, Chris. <laughs> Yo, speaking of which, I'm just saying, you know, maybe went, maybe, maybe Sean Payton can pull his um. Oh, you mute yourself again. Uh, maybe Sean Payton can pull his uh his um. What's the uh what's the thing? What's the the prototypical uh, stereotype of white people in movies? The the white savior to Jamin Winston. White savior, yeah, white Winston. Savior. It's a Winston. Here's how you throw a ball. You, know, you have to put your hands on the. <laughs> Gotta do it like the... that. Gotta do it like Al Pacino. <laughs> now, now imagine you are in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> and your mama's ringing the dinner bell. Imagine that wide receiver is crab legs, and you got to throw the ball. <laughs> I'm pretty sure coaches already did the crab legs thing to him. And you know who it was? Bruce Arian. 
hey, you did that with the crab legs, can't you do <laughs> Speaking of which, um Oh, <sighs> real quick, real quick, because I know we're not gonna really talk about it. We're gonna remain on football. Yeah. But I have to say this. Um Urban Meyer um is going to coach again. He's going to coach hmm. again. Except this time he's coming to the NFL. Oh, Jacksonville. Right? Yeah, Jacksonville. <laughs> Oh, good luck. Chris, Chris good, luck. good luck. You know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you, <laughs> if you leave, you left Ohio State as the man, the person that was going to re rebuilding this fucking program, all the rest of that, you are the man. And you had a, a your, your health was terrible. It was terrible. You were depressed all the rest of that. I got a question, Chris. Then why are you going to upgrade? to not only the NFL, which is a whole different beast, mm -hmm. but why are you then going to have to, you know you're going to have to deal with grown men now. And also these grown men get paid more than you. Are you really ready for somebody, one of the players to literally tell you to go fuck yourself? Are, are you, you ready for that? Because in college you had, you, you didn't have to deal with that. That was a stress you didn't have to deal with. NFL, I... Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Did you cut I out? Did. No, I didn't cut out. Well, okay, now, you, now you're back. Now, yeah, now you're back. Say. Yeah. But yeah, grown ass man. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is different. It's just I mean, is you, is, is you ready? Like, is you ready for the Jaguars and the Minshew experience? I don't know, man. I'm just saying. It's not like you trading the problem for another problem on that one. It's man. a name. <laughs> it's just a name, and you know, con, the cons are more than willing to throw some money at at that. You know him, so yeah, why man. not? And a name, but here's, and that's name. what I'm saying. That's just that's just dumb to me, though, man. You trading the problem for another problem, man. You so don't uh, scream about your heart hurting in a month, nigga. Don't do that. So um. Yo, Aaron, uh, you don't have any excuses now on why you couldn't beat Tampa Bay. You were None. given, you were given opportunities. None, but, but, I, I will have to say this: y'all got screwed. Look, look, look. All I'll say is this: yes, was it questionable? Sure. But at the same time. Maybe don't put yourself in that position in the first place. Oh, oh, hey, Chris, Chris, you can go fuck yourself with that logic, okay? Okay, because oh, I know you. Oh, no, 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 you no, 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 the reason why I say that is because I know for a fact you on the fuck Aaron Rodgers train. And here's the real talk: I don't kind of blame you on that. Exactly. But, exactly. But my agenda really low key. But <laughs> if I can say something, but Tom I understand. Brady, the but I gotta say something. Tom Brady played like dog shit. Oh, the defense bailed his ass out. Ooh. What? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The defense, the defense sure wasn't something that was white and black and can't see shit. Oh, see, here's the thing, though. D, I will say this too. So, uh, Green Bay, it's about 10 seconds left on the clock. Why would you leave that dude wide the fuck open to running in for a touchdown with 10 seconds left in the half? I saw that blown coverage. I was like, what are you guys doing? He caught that touchdown. I was like, hey, what the fuck? I knew it was over when. Tom dunked it out to Gronk, and Gronk destroyed them for about, what was it, 25 yards? 30. Chris, when I saw that, I was like, oh, the game over. <laughs> oh, the game Gronk, is. Gronk, who has been be kind of sort of silent during the season, he hasn't really been making waves. Like, you know, he, like it's like he does enough. It's kind of like he's he's basically in the position that Witten was in. Like, when Witten gives you some yards, he'll give you some he'll yards. He'll give you on yards. And to give Gronk and Gronk. It has the advantage over Witten of being fast and height being a fat and being fast and height and all that is a he's a different type he's a different type of tight tight end than, than well still the fact that you have a tight end that can do what that's that play is really designed for running backs and your wide receivers mm -hmm. and guess what he did he ran it just like them and probably to be honest with you better because he, freaking did nature, because he did that shit in New England too and when he did, when I, I, Chris, the second Tom took one step back and turned to the side, and I saw, I saw Gronk. I'm like, yo, Big yo, ass somebody stop him, dude. It, 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 so that happened, and yes, we, we can sit there and say the rest, but oh no, 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 we can because I'm gonna give the, the reason why I, well, I said can't. I, I wasn't saying can't, but yeah, you can't. You could definitely the say first it, right? half. The first half 
we were letting all these calls go and real talk even the second half to a degree and real yeah and the, no, the second half too but in the second half i started seeing something with the non-calls so green bay ain't gonna get that all right then i see another one y'all saw that ref Okay, I mean, even even even, hey, even Collinsworth said, "I guess they're letting them play." I guess right. They're letting them play. Next thing I know, next thing I know, and I say, hey, Chris, I don't know how you saw it, but the way I saw it, I saw him grab his head, grab his shirt. Now, D, is that impeding? Is that slowing him down? Yes and no, but I would have played fifty fifty. It's fifty fifty. It's a big. It's, actually, it's always fifty fifty in those situations, depending yeah. on where the ball's at. Yeah, yeah. I would have let it play. I, I let him play it out, and they did. And the thing that got me was when the sec I saw him tug, it didn't trip him up or nothing. He was still going in stride for the ball. So I'm thinking, D at, at the angle I saw that, I like I would have threw a flag right then and there. But it was one of them situations where if I was a ref, I will have my hand on the flag, look at everybody else. Y'all good? All right, cool. <laughs> like like to me because Chris, it was literally like this. All right, all right no flag. No flag. I bet. Yo, yo. <laughs> but what killed me? Because it was so late, and you know what got me? Mike Pereira. <sighs> Mike Pereira got me. Here's Mike Pereira talking to like no Troy Aikman. No, first it was Troy. Troy was like, "Wow, okay, it was pretty late." What did Joe Buck? Joe. Joe was like, "Those are late flags." Wow, and everybody's saying it's pass interference. Wow, okay. And th- th- you know what's bad with both the commentators? Like, it's, it's, it's a, they, they said it's a penalty. The, why, why would they wait so long? I mean, Mike it was Pere- just- and then Mike, Mike Pereira get on. It's like, yeah, um, they were kind of throw, late throw. When you have the ex, when you have the ex head referee who has been doing this shit for years, say, Y'all threw those out pretty late. I'll be honest with you, if Tony Romo was commentating, you know it's fucked up when Tony be like, I don't know about that one. No, 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 no Tony would have said, no, Tony would have been like, la- I know for a fact, Tony would have been laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Ra- hey, hey, Aaron. Oh, man. I think I found a flag that was meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I will never have it in our lifetime. I, look, I look, look. I, I'm look, look. I I'm over the Dez caught it thing. I'm I've been over. Oh, we're it. over it. We're over but, it. We're... But if I can make reference, Chris, that nigga caught that damn ball. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um. So so it and also. So uh, Aaron, you know, you know, when you were running the ball before you threw the ball, could have ran in for a touchdown. Did you see that? I saw Did that. And I was like, because normally in run, those run run run. run. Because normally in those situations, you know, from your perspective as a fan, you're thinking, well, maybe I didn't see something, hence why yeah, he didn't maybe do that. Couldn't slide. Maybe then you see it and you're watching and you're like, yo, you had a free shot to the end zone and nobody would have touched you. Nobody. Nobody was going to come after you, dog. You would have you got, to... got the touchdown and it's like, all right, cool. We got a touchdown. We're good. And real talk, and real talk. If you angled yourself right on that play, you could have went for uh, unnecessary. Ru- <laughs> it may look like an unnecessary. Ru- yeah, 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 yeah. Roughing the passer. Oh, like oh. something like not even roughing the pass. They wouldn't be in the back there. But the point is, still, you, you could have. And you can run. I've seen you run, Aaron. You, You're decent. <laughs> you know what, Chris? You know what, Chris? And I'll, I'll tell you to do this. And, and now it's time for me to do it. You're right. You're right. If you have would have taken care of what you would have taken care of, and I will say in the early fourth quarter, you wouldn't been in the situation. Gave you three you passing, back. three interceptions, three. And let me tell you something about that. Two of them, when that one of them was real good. The second one where homie leaned, oh, I love that one because there was zero chance for him to even get the ball. And yeah. he got, oh, I love that. I love that. You only get six, you get, get six points out of it. Let me make let's make it very clear that pass interference was balls, balls, but that was right. They should have been cleared as we even, if you your, even if you got field goals off the other two, you still would have been in good shape. It's like, all right, well, at least we got field goals, we got a shot. At least, no, they didn't even get that, bruh. Wow, but then, but then, Just but then, fucking wow, but then Buffalo had to face Kansas City, and I'm sorry, Kansas City is a fucking cheat code. Kareem Hunt could not be touched. This motherfucker was tech mobile. I mean, he people. tech. I mean, yo, they, you know what's bad when I didn't know that you could. 
Serpentining in football to me is the funniest thing because when you have somebody really zigging, darting in and out like that, going up a field, when you get Tech Mobile going up a field, that's a diff- that's a form of disrespect to me. Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt, fr- fresh two years out of punching a white bitch in the face and getting away with it. <laughs> fresh over there. <laughs> I had to get that out because I thought Kareem it was bullshit. Hunt, dude, I thought it was such such bullshit with Kareem. Kareem Hunt, I'm glad he got over it. Kareem, Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill were murdering oh that. Oh my Buffalo. god! Like, Holy again, shit! Again, like you said the best way, they're cheat code. Buffalo's defense to me was the thing I thought that was was going to be the reason why they weren't going to make it. And not saying it's bad, I just knew it was going to give out eventually. And yeah. Yeah, it was an ad against the. If, oh, oh no, no, I'm getting, I'm, Chiefs, getting, I'm, yeah. getting mess, no I'm getting a mess. Cream and Hump is on, is on Tampa. My bad. Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey were murdering them. My bad. I'm tripping. Wait, but I said Kareem Hunt. I said Kareem Hunt. That was my fault. Tyreek Tari- 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 Hill and Travis Kelsey were murdering Wait, Buffalo. Because you know what? Uh, threw Travis Kel- off, what threw me off was that Tyreek Hill actually did a couple of rushing that were for long yards. So I, I was I, I got thrown off on that one. But yeah, those two were murdering Buffalo. Somebody- Somebody said something pissed me off so bad. So I said, man, Travis gonna fuck the shit out of his black wife. I'm like, why y'all keep mentioning that? What? It's probably because he's like the white boy that's not problematic. Knock on wood. Um, Thank you, man. Thank you for that. I was like, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. thing. I don't care. I don't care. They really do emphasize. I know what it was because I know, but this is the reason why I get mad, especially a lot about a lot of people in uh, our line of work with uh, with podcasting that, you know, loves talk about women. You know, it's nerd shit. Yeah. Y'all cover it up as, nah, man, we talk about black people. We just, no, 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 no. I'm trying to appreciate black women. No, you're perving, nigga. I know what it is. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Y'all don't, Travis Kelsey. Don't, get it twi- don't get it twisted. There's some black women that are like, oh, shit, Travis Kelsey. All right, I like him. Go go ahead, girl. That, that, you know, so you it's know, like, all right. You know, no, 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 no. Let's make it real clear. Travis is not an Italian nigga, so he's a country bumpkin. That's a whole different set of black women. That I mean, Southern I black know. women. <laughs> oh, not even Southern black women. It's that... I don't know. I don't know. Northerner esque. No, 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 no. It's not no region in this. Oh, yeah, I thought it was it's region. Just that, it's just this is not a region. It's just more of I don't understand black girls that like country white guys. That's my thing. I just uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. But I had it like, happen. Hey. Look, I was in the Air Force. There was a couple of country white dudes that I work with that black chicks just like. <laughs> Like, and I'm not knocking. Know. I'm not knocking it because it's like, hey, maybe there's something there. I ain't knocking no, it. Love no, you, no, love. No, it was no. like, did, did, look, right. like, Dusty Rhodes has taught me anything. <laughs> Dusty has taught maybe me it's anything. the non-problem. Maybe it's because they're not problematic. So it's like, no, no. Aspect. <laughs> hey, Chris, I got some bad news for you. That's kind of why they go. <laughs> I want this motherfucker to look at me, and if I give make him mad enough, he look like he's gonna call me. <laughs> he called me Negro, nigga. <laughs> Call me a nappy head, a hoe. I dare you, motherfucker. And he does, oh, and he fucking hey, is nasty. Hey, 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 real talk. Travis Kelsey probably says that a couple times. Oh, I bet he does. Dude. Get your nappy ass in the back. You play too much. <laughs> oh, yes. You need to quit. Ugh. You nasty. Everybody like, you gonna let that white man? Here's the thing. Again, again, I I feel for anybody in a swirl relationship that has to deal with that. It's like, because real talk, even if like... It doesn't have, it happen with neither of my sisters, but if one of them married a white guy and he says something like that to her, here's me. You just gonna let him talk to you. <laughs> That's why, like, like, so when I hear, and more so country bambas than, you know, a, a white boy from the city that's learned. Other, but for country people, it's that twang and is the way, and they carry themselves just like black guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. It's not overly aggressive, but it's aggressive enough. But, but still, it's like. What do you see in that? I don't know. Whatever. I'm not a yeah. I, don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, which ironically enough, before we go back to the game, I still laugh. I'm like, Patrick Mahomes, mulatto, and he has the most whitest wife you can think of. It's like, oh, of course. Of course. Look, 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 look. D don't say it. I'm saying D don't say it. I'm saying D don't say it. I'm saying Patrick didn't know he was black until he was 18. So give him a break. <laughs> I mean, the hairstyle says as much. So you right, you right. That's the nigga that got into. That's the nigga that got to college. You know, you black. I am. I am. Huh. 
Listen to well, Jack. All right, brothers. All right, nah, man. We're going to have to take you some. Like, look, we're going to have to take you some. Oh, what college did he go to? I think he went, he went to a and um, He didn't go to A&M. He went to, um, why am I thinking Texas A&M? It wasn't Texas A&M. Why am I thinking Texas A&M? Uh, come on, I'm looking at it right now. He went to Texas went, Tech. Texas Tech, thank you. See, I knew it was Texas. I oh, yeah, he, he had some black I brothers that was, hey, we're going to take your ass over here. Well, no, actually, here's it. Like, like, he's from Tyler, Texas, too. So, actually, that's no excuse either way, D. Holy shit. <laughs> no, right there, he's like this. He's like, all right, I'm black. It's like this. Have you played with black people before? Cause bear in <laughs> mind, Tyler, you know, come on, man, he got, he know what he is. I man. mean, cause like, cause like, cause he went to Texas Tech. Texas Tech is in Lubbock, Texas, so that's like the northern part of Texas. Yeah, that's the North Texas. Yeah, bro. yeah, that's in North Texas and stuff. And I'm just sitting there like that is probably a pretty mixed area from what I know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I don't, you know. I don't, you know, but, anyway, but, um, but but yeah, but that game, dude, they shut down Cole Beasley. And fucking um, Stefan Diggs. I was shocked. I was like, oh shit. And I was right. Yeah, I was right about Tyler, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, man. You you grew up enough around enough black yeah. people to know what yeah. he was. But no, I was... Man, look, look, no bad fact. I go one step further. I go one step further. I don't know which parent he was with, but if it was with the white parent going to the black parent's house, this is what he heard. Don't be bringing that little half <laughs> <laughs> mulatto. Don't be, bringing, don't be bringing that little half white child in my house now. <laughs> Don't have him touching everything, smelling like his mama. Hey, white people, we do the same thing y'all do to us. Yes. <laughs> no, the thing it is, I, I was, like I said, I was shocked that they shut down Stefan Diggs and Beasley. I wasn't. I wasn't. Stefan Diggs was starving. I knew he was going to. I knew he was going to, man. I knew they, they was going to do anything they had to shut him down, man. Even if you were going to do the um thing where they, you know, which Buffalo does very well with um Cole Beasley. Use them as a true slot receiver, and they shut that down too. There was no alleyways, nothing. They fucking choked these niggas to death. And I told, and I, and I, I knew it after the first half. I, the first half it was like what, it was like three to twenty, something like that. Something like that. I was like, it's game over. Yeah, it was twenty one, twenty one three at the half. Yeah, it's game over. I already knew it right then. There. Yeah, they, they like they, the first quarter, Buffalo's up nine zip, and I was like, I don't know. And then second quarter, it's like Patrick Mahomes just turned the shit on and was like, ah, shit. But never mind. <laughs> man, like I said, man, I, I just knew it was over for them. I mean, all he ended up have to make it. I do it have without making the Super Bowl. And the crazy part was, was like Mahomes was in concussion protocol, which full disclosure, everybody was thinking that it was some sort of like inside thing for the NFL, but they forgot when Mahomes was playing against um uh the not the Bills, um, the Browns, right? He got choked out when he got tackled oh, by old dude. Yeah, when he because the dude had his arm around his neck when he tackled him. Mm. So when when he went down, it's like when Mahomes got up and stuff, he was a little lightheaded. And somebody was like, Oh, he must got concussed. And then somebody came out with a report saying, Yeah, Mahomes got kind of like choked out when he got tackled and stuff. So he was lightheaded. I'm like, Yeah, that makes sense. So he wasn't concussed, but everybody was coming up with like the NFL conspired to get Mahomes out of concussion protocol. And I'm like, There's gonna be a lot of that. Like, like even with this is the thing, and I tell this to everybody, when you when you there's gonna be a always gonna be a story that's gonna go into your conspiracy theory. No matter what type of conspiracy theory you have that about that game. There's going to be evidence for you to think that, okay? Yeah. Most of the time, it's not. I mean, most of the time, almost all of the time, is not that. Yeah, yeah. You get some weird shit like the flake gate. Yeah. <laughs> you get some weird shit where you kind of think something happened locally, like you know, them niggas that was food, that that food poison Michael for the flu game. You you know you you would yeah. have some weird <laughs> dumb out of place <laughs> shit that doesn't make any sense that happens. It just so happens happens, but. As nefarious as everybody thinks it is, no, 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 no. The NFL does all their nefarious shit before the season starts. Yeah, exactly. even... <laughs> they have a meeting at their table with Jerry. Their... <laughs> no, 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 no. They have their meeting. <laughs> Jerry Jones. Gentlemen, welcome. <laughs> Jerry Jones has the bourbon hair. And like, so uh, what home cooking is the Cowboys going to get? Shut the fuck up, Jerry. All right. All right, Jerry, we're not doing your. Jerry, you're not getting the Super Bowl this year. Come on, guys. Now, I think I deserve a Super Bowl this year. Do you want it? Like, wait a minute. But 
if you win a Super Bowl, you're going to make less money. I think I don't want to live with the Super Bowl this year, boy. So uh, who's going to break Dak Prescott's leg? So last, year, <laughs> so last year, we broke Dak Prescott's legs. I'm thinking this year, we could just shoot our whole defense. Shoot him right in the face. <laughs> Fucking shiv. <laughs> All the defensive linemen. Man, imagine that, man. Imagine that. Imagine that. You uh, <laughs> you mentioned that you Randy Gregory hopping out the shower, right? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Zeke walk up to you. <laughs> no, no, do you see it's gonna happen during the game? They go play like the Giants, <laughs> and he gets shivved. It's like Randy Gregory is down. He's grabbing his sides. What happened? Hey, what the hell happened? <laughs> Motherfucker goes to the sideline, take a steel pole from a random fan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, but dog. Yo, I think the, NFL do... does, the NFL does all that planning before this season. All right, guys. No, no I will now, say this. All the stuff that happens in the playoffs, that's truly organic. The NFL doesn't mess with that because they even they benefit off of organic progress. I don't know, D. I don't know, D. I'm kind of on uh team Chiefs because you know, you know, Buccaneers got home field advantage in the Super Bowl, they play in the Tampa. I got a question, Chris. I got a question, Chris. When only a few people can go there, and the few people that can go there are more than likely, you know, like um executives family and friends and you know um maybe second cousins you, you, know, <laughs> you know second cousins and maybe a couple of celebrities i got a question what real fans are really there anyway because the super bowl is they always did. They, said, no- they said they limited to like what was it 50 percent apparently for the super bowl which i can deal with that that sounds kind of cool but yeah. the thing about Which, I mean, that's what Dallas was doing anyway, 50% capacity. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I noticed that Dallas, Dallas did that, well, but Houston did too. But um, still, the, the thing is, like, there ain't going to be no real fans there. It's just a bunch of people there just happy to see football. Really, yeah. that's really, really all it is. Now, you want to say home field advantage? I'm going to be real with you, honest. Tampa really don't have home field advantage, like, ever. I know they had a real good season. They're not a that, – that's not – Again, this ain't Philly, nigga. Like, what do you make you think? I mean, I think it's just the logic of, like, again, going again, conspiracy again, theories. It's like, he might be home field advantage. Like, but then again, Tom Brady has won a Super Bowl on that field, what, twice? So, maybe. Somebody said it best, though, that this this 2020 season with Tom Brady was like, he literally went up to Tampa was like, hey, Tampa, y'all ready to go to the Super Bowl? And everybody's like, sure, Tom, sure, let's go. Sure. <laughs> he got yeah. him to the Super Bowl. And it's like. And I keep telling y'all, man, he didn't go to no sorry-ass team. Oh, I know that. I know that. I know, but D, it's just so funny how he was just like, hey, Tampa, you want to go to the Super Bowl? (laughs) Get in, bitches. We're going to the Super Bowl. I know, right? I know, right? (laughs) Motherfucker, hello, fellow youths. You ready (laughs) to go to the Super Super Bowl? Bowl? (laughs) Yay! Oh, man, this is motherfucker. I mean, really, man. I kind of want to see Mahomes win again, just because. I think I look now real talk. Um, because even if Brady does, even if Brady doesn't win the Super Bowl, that's still admirable that he went straight back. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because it's really crazy. Um, I I'm with Shady Sharp. I disagree with Tony Romo when he said that um, if Patrick don't win this one, he's never going to catch up with Tom Brady. All right, Tony, you know that's bullshit. There's still a good chance he can catch up with um, Tom Brady, but that's neither here or there to me. Yeah. Doesn't need to hear it there to me. This Super Bowl right now, I'm gonna be real honest with you. It's gonna be exciting for one main reason. Um, the Chiefs are fucking bullies on offense, and the the, the Buccaneers are really, really bullies on defense. So I mean, I gotta give credit to like I think I people... feel that the edge is gonna be Tampa Bay, but if they don't stop Mahomes, I'm gonna put he... this. Mahomes is a fucking Harrier jet, man. The whole team, that whole, the whole defense, offense. The Chiefs defense has to touch Tom Brady. They ain't no getting around they that. Have, they, have, they have to get at him. They're going to have to force him to throw, to do old man Tom Brady shit and throw three picks. Because AB is, to do enough, uh, AB still a threat. And AB, now that, that they're saying that he's still not ready. He has a practice. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure he's going to show play. up. He's going to play. Come on now. Kareem Hunt plays with Tampa, so him and Kareem Hunt, they're threats, definitely. And then we forget that fucking shady, 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 shady McCoy is playing. <laughs> he's just chilling because it's like, well, you don't. No, he's just sitting on the bench, like, well, they don't need me because the run game is going smoothly, but I'm here. 
my gosh, man. So, I mean, this is this, talk, I think it's going to be actually, this is a Super Bowl I actually want to watch. And amazingly, it's one with Tom Brady in it, and I want to watch it. I mean, it's old versus young. I mean, it's 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 two people that, shockingly enough, they both respect each other. We know and, this. Yeah, it really is. And I hate going that way, route, but it is kind of a pass of the torch because Patrick Mahomes going to be, he's already been proven to everybody. This That's the motherfucker of the future. Now, here's the so, thing. Do you feel at some point down the road people are going to look back at Andy Reid as probably one of like the better coaches in the NFL? I'm going to be real with you. Top five. I think top everybody top has grossly five, underestimated think, how yeah. good he is. Grossly yeah, I, underestimated. Him. With, I think in a way, I don't think he has because, of course, his predecessor, the dude that taught him everything, he they won five Super Bowls with the 49ers. He's not yeah. going to – I mean, yeah, five, yeah. With the 49ers, yeah. you're not going to yeah. beat that. You're yeah. not going to beat that. You know, everybody that came out, all those coaches that came from Bill Walsh, Walsh and made themselves, all made themselves Super Bowl yeah. co- um, coaches. But Andy Reid, of all of them, the stuff that he did at Philly, mm-hmm. um, and the stuff the stuff that he did at Philly is good, but the stuff that he did at Kansas City is what really shows how good it was. I mean, to be honest with you, like I said, really that- that last play with Chad Hinn, that showed you everything about because nobody expected that play. I want people to understand, like, everybody was expecting, like, Chad Hinn to, like, maybe down the ball. And they did not. Nah, he got the first down. Everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. What the, what the fuck just happened? Like, like we talk, we, everybody talks big shit about, um, we talk big shit about Belichick being so great, man. But yeah. Andy Reid, pound for pound, has shown that he is probably one of the greatest coaches of all time. Belichick is good. I would say yeah. this. Next season for Belichick is going to be more of the test. Because I think yeah, after, yeah, yeah. after Brady I, after, after Brady left, I expect Belichick to hit some hard times. But if he bounce, if, if Belichick bounces off, bounce back off this, that's going to be good. It's kind of like what you said with Sean Payton earlier. If Sean Payton next year somehow bounces back a little bit, all right. He'll be all right. I think a lot of us who are questioning how good of a coach he is will be will shut her off. But, yeah, I think Andy Reid, I mean, like I said, I just feel like Andy Reid, a lot of people just don't respect him against it. Also, I, it's, I don't know what it may be, what it may be, but we just, a lot of us don't respect the game like that. Also, um, I think it also, that team is healthy. That's something yeah. that's admirable as shit. Like, you rarely heard any injuries other than like during the season, the Rona hit a couple of players. Yeah, but say, just, say, yeah, two, yeah, three, say. top and stuff. They, they were never, nobody had like, I think, well, one of the defensive people actually is out. Like he ain't playing at all, which I they, think, I forgot I who it was. I um, agree with you with the, everybody, the way everybody's been getting hurt this season and last season in NFL. Yeah, it's actually a miracle that that team is healthy as it is. <laughs> Yeah, and to be playing as strong and hard as they are, man. Yeah, you, I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. except for Tampa, Tampa Bay too. I mean, it's just Tampa Bay was like the quiet team, even though they had Tom Brady. They were like quiet until like right, the yeah. half, and it was like, oh, Tom Brady and them are in. All right, cool. You started really noticing that this team is legit. So that's gonna be uh fun. But next time around, folks, last Boy Scout. That is the. Uh, that is the sports show for the Super Bowl. That's yeah, gonna next, yeah, um, next week we did. Yeah, we're not gonna be yeah, next time y'all hear from us, we're gonna be it's gonna be our post Super Bowl show and we're gonna be talking about the rest of shit, but the real talk. No. Fuck it. I didn't want to, I want to talk about Last Boy Scout. A movie I have never seen here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen like I have seen the program. Don't remember much about it. Last Boy Scout. I have not seen one second of that movie, and I'm actually excited because you show me Billy Blanks shooting people as he runs with the ball, then makes a touchdown, then has a goddamn nerve to kneel in Enzo and shoot himself in the head. And I'm telling myself I never seen this movie. Why? Black man took a knee and it put a bullet in his head. Man, and who knew that Tybo? Who knew that Tybo was actually a decent wide receiver? But we get to talk about that. Maybe our boy, uh, I say maybe because I don't know if we're going to do it. Maybe our boy, uh, DJ Sue, is going to be on that episode with us. But yeah, man, we, we, we're definitely going to do that. And that's going to be, uh, I hopefully, if we get it all right, it's going to be available on Super Bowl Sunday. See you here before the game. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, that is it. And we will catch you guys later. Peace.